Hey, it's Mazzy, and welcome back. And uh, there's been a lot of wonderful art books, music-related art books coming out lately, and I'm gonna include those in some upcoming video. But this one I was gonna include in a, in a mix video, but I wanna do a, a specific shout out for Colin Maximilian Fulcher, otherwise known as the great Barney Bubbles. Uh, this is a book that was uh, recently reissued, expanded, updated, on this great artist. Uh, he unfortunately died at 41 years old in the early 80s. Uh, he was, um, of his own life, he uh, committed suicide and he had some uh, issues with dep depression and um, some personal issues with his business at that point uh, going downhill. But um, this artist, this is The Wild World of Barney Bubbles. It was just issued in the UK and this is on Thames and Hudson, so I think you have to get it as an import. I don't think there's an American uh, version of this, but even if you don't know the name Barney Bubbles, you know his work. I want to show this record. I don't have any more, and I love one of my favorite covers is this Brinsley Schwartz album. Of course, one of the great pub rock bands uh, of the, you know, this is 1970, I believe this one came out, but um, he had a really great fusion of, of pop art styles, of Soviet poster art, and really mix uh, work that that he was associated uh, early on with um, Stiff Records and Radar Records and F-Beat that were these um, overlapping labels uh, that had early records of Elvis Costello and Nick Lowe and uh, The Damned. And I will show just a handful of collections uh, from my collection of his work, but let me just show you a few spreads of work you definitely know. Of course, the infamous debut of Elvis Costello, uh, My Aim is True, poster art, books, magazines. He would later uh, dive into music videos, singles, some Devo singles he did, and it's divided into the sections of his career, which Unfortunately, in terms of once he got known, was was short-lived. But amongst my favorite uh, posters he's done, look at this, Elvis Costello. So a high, highly recommended book. Seek it out. Uh, I got mine through Amazon. I think it's about a $40, $45 book, but I got it for a while, I think for $28. So just, you know, search it where you can. If you live in the UK, it's probably easier and more accessible to get. But... I'm just going to go through a handful of records from uh, Barney Bubbles, the fabulous Barney Bubbles, the name he used in his art career. Of course, the original Elvis Costello, My Aim is True. This is an original UK version. It came with various background colors. So it, that pop art thing followed through on this wonderful record in, was it 1976, I believe, 76, 77. Uh, this is an American version with a white back boring cover, right? But there was a yellow version, there was a blue version. So many different options he had on that great record. Again, a famous cover too is uh, his second record. And this is an original F-beat issue of Elvis Costello's second album, this year's model. Uh, this also came with the cover variations there. If you look for... Uh, in your bins, you'll find the used bins, if you can find this record, various positions of the photograph of Elvis Costello behind the Hasselblad camera, different positions of him taking uh, the picture. So a really a wonderful record. This is my favorite Elvis Costello record. So when I do my ranking, you already know what the number one record will be, I think. Unless I change my mind then, we'll see how that goes. Of course, this, I mean, what a mess. It's like Jackson Pollock-like at times splatter art, but uh, again, Barney Bubbles is a, a master at this type of work, and he was very much in demand uh, for a, a short time for a really, he burned bright for a few years. Now, this is an interesting uh, one. This is Elvis Costello and the Attractions Get Happy. This is the MoFi version, not getting into the whole MoFi debacle now, but the UK version had this original cover with the uh, ring wear uh, from the cocktail or the coffee mug or their beer stein on the cover of it. Same here with ringware. But in America, an original copy here that Columbia released, uh, they deleted the ringware fearing 
people would think that they were buying a used record. So it's an unfortunate way that the, the integrity of the artist's work was pulled out of the American edition by Columbia. Another one uh, on Columbia, and of course in the UK, was uh, Imperial Bedroom. An infamous cover here where um, he sort of was very influenced by the Blue Note, uh, Kenny Burrell album cover. What a great cover. This is Elvis Costello's country album. The great, the great design by the great Barney Bubbles. Album produced by Nick Lowe, uh, The Debut of the Damned. This is my original UK copy. Just a great art direction in the photo shoot of this wonderful cover. Not as elaborate in terms of graphics. I mean, he's really known for his graphic work. This is a little different, but I loved how the masthead sort of blends like a magazine cover and behind the photograph, it kind of overlaps uh, that great photograph. Another really great one is uh, the debut album by Ian Drury. This is uh, New Boots and Panties. Great photograph of Ian Drury and his son. And of course, the great pop art colors. He really was into saturating these colors and the use of type. And of course, this is probably um, one of his most infamous designs with type and background patterns. And there was a whole variety of color options. So I'm sure he was driving some of these record companies crazy with the options, the printing options. And of course, today, collectors would be going all in for buying every single option, every single version of this, but um, did a great job on, on these records. His, his work with Ian Drury is really profiled in that book, as with, as with Elvis Costello and Nick Lowe, Carlin Carter, Brinsley Schwartz, and of course, uh, Speak of the Devil, Nick Lowe. The, Original UK version, Jesus of Cool, Columbia, Americans Panic, and change the name to Pure Pop for Now People. But again, those graphic pop art colors, and this, this is the 1970s, almost like 10 years after the pop art experience of the 60s. Uh, very simple graphic, again, Nick Lowe, Labor of Lust. I think it's great when an artist and a musician collaborate on an ongoing series of records. And I've showcased this on various videos I've done over the years, whether it's photographers, designers, illustrators. I uh, recently showed a little feed in Neon Parks, who did a lot of cover art. All those wonderful kind of uh, just outrageous illustrations for little feet. And they really grew together. He also did Weasels Rip My Flesh, but that's another story here. But um, Another of the great collaborations that uh, Barney Bubbles did was with, of course, Billy Bragg. And these covers just really, he's taking from the Soviet poster art uh, and uh, this, this Russian constructivism thing. And I just really love it. And it's perfect for the nature of the music of uh, Billy Bragg, uh, his socialist uh, direction musically and his political stance. And he did a great job with uh, an ongoing series uh, for Billy Bragg as well. So, I mean, I could not mention uh, Barney Bubbles without uh, showing these great collaborations with Billy Bragg. And I'm gonna end up with one of my very favorite covers. The UK version is so much better than the American version. And this is Forever Now by the Psychedelic Furs. And I bought this record in the UK. I remember seeing this on the stack, I didn't know it was a psychedelic first cover at first glance, because, you know, I did see the star, but I was looking at the type, trying to read the type, and I went all in on this, and uh, this is a superior cover, better than the American Columbia edition, which is not surprising, and it came with this wonderful uh, psychedelic furs poster. So that's a good way to end with this beautiful graphic. Day glow, psychedelic, power pop, psychedelic furs, and masterpiece. What a great album, great band, and a great artist. Barney Bubbles, check out the book, check out his work, and now you know his artwork, Mazzy Loves You.